Good morning. Good morning. Today is a sad day for our city and for the children of our city and most of all for our parents. The city school board decided today to deny parents the right to fight for their kids. Our families and parents deserve to have their voices heard and to have most of all, the most important right as an American citizen, the right to vote. The hypocrisy is staggering. If you believe in democracy, if you want to empower our citizens, if you believe in fixing our broken schools, you empower the people of Rochester. You empower them to most of all have a voice, but instead, the school board has decided to just disenfranchise them. The truth is they know what I know. And all of our parents, teachers, and most importantly, our students know. Our school system is broken. And this November, we will finally have, they will finally have their voices heard. So we can provide the education our children deserve so they can have a fighting chance at life. Rochester, this very city whose legacy and whose shoulders we stand on, the community of Frederick Douglass and Susan B. Anthony, as we near the anniversary of winning the right to vote for women, it is shameful that today our school board wants to take away from our mothers and our fathers the right to vote for the future of their kids. The school district clearly isn't standing up for our citizens, but I can ensure the citizens of Rochester this one thing. Like Frederick Douglass and Susan B. Anthony, who fought for the voiceless so many years ago, today I will continue to stand and fight for our families, for our children, because it's the right thing to do. Frederick Douglass said, power can seize nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. And this November, I am hopeful that the citizens of this city will demand change once and for all for their children, for our future, because they are all of our kids. Thank you all for coming. I'll take any questions that you may have. Mayor, I'm assuming your lawyers have said that this is constitutional, it's, it's abiding by the law. What are your attorneys saying about whether this referendum can stay? Well, our attorneys is confident that we will be able to move forward with the referendum on a ballot. Uh, this is a Hail Mary play by the city school district, and it's sad because instead of focusing on educating our kids, they're focusing on suppressing their parents' right to vote for the future of their kids. And that, my friends, is so very, very wrong. Do you think at this point we still haven't heard the final um, decision from the state on what the plan is for the school district? Is it too soon to have the parents have a say? The parents always deserve a say. They always deserve the ability to have a say in the future of their children's lives. Parents deserve the right to be able to walk into any school building and to know what's going on with their children, walk into Broad Street and know what's going on with their children. They deserve the right to be able to say today they want something different or they want things to stay the same. But to deny them the right to even do that is so very, very wrong. It's what we face every day. It's what we've been talking about every day. When we talk about what is the problem with the system, the problem is that the system is so very built, is built on adults being able to dictate what happens with kids all the time and not what's best for children. Where are we with kindergarten and preschool education? Where are we with our graduation rates? Where are we with career technical education? Where are we with the very things that they should be focusing on? But instead, they choose to waste our time their lawyers' time and our parents' time by putting forth this 
lawsuit that to me you have so many other things to be focusing on actually 30,000 other things to be focusing on Mary, and that's our Van, children you and Van White make almost an identical argument you're both arguing that the voters should have the right to decide who represents them he's just saying it should happen on a local level you are saying they should have the right to decide whether the state should take over your your quotes are almost identical but you're on opposite sides so it is happening on a local level the state isn't voting on this referendum the only people that are voting on a referendum would be the citizens of Rochester the very citizens who are sending their children to a broken school system those citizens that deserve to have a fighting chance at life those citizens that are right there in the county jail those citizens what I am talking about is giving our parents the right to decide on a local level what they want and what the school district has just shown is they don't care what parents want they don't even want to know because if what are you afraid of what are you afraid of because if you really wanted to know how parents feel you let the referendum go forward but obviously they're afraid of something because they know like I know parents are sick and tired they are sick and tired of a broken system we only get one chance to educate a child one chance to raise them up and as a mom what I want for my child I want for every child of this city and that is what I'm fighting for because I hear their voices I see them in a grocery store they call my office I walk out in the neighborhoods and I hear them I hear their cries I understand their plight they're my family members they're my friends they're my loved ones I am fighting for them and I'm fighting for every child of the city to have the education that they deserve and I believe that if we are able to pursue or when we are able to proceed the citizens of this city will stand very clearly and show what they want they deserve that option Actually, what it will show is what the parents of this community want and the voters of this community want. And that is change within the city school district. We have all talked about it for the last 40 years. We've talked about the system being broken, that things need to happen, things need to change. I have had six superintendents in six years, in the six years that I've been mayor, six. How can you have stability? How can you move forward? How can you educate children when there is no stability in the system? The one thing that I would want to be able to do is to go to Albany and say that, that by referendum, by the voters of this city, they have decided that they want change. And understand that you have an obligation to give them that change. I think that the distinguished educator outlined it very clearly what's broken and he also out outlined exactly what needs to happen to fix it and you know what I went out and I talked to students I talked to parents and I talked to experts specifically about whatever the distinguished educator outlined in his report I had those meetings Well, our, our, law, our, our corporation counsel and, and um, our lawyers will answer this, and they will um, put forth the, the best argument possible. Um, but I just also think that in a legal aspect of this, that we'll be fine and that we will win this. But it just clearly shows where the focus is in denying parents, denying parents the ability to even vote for their children's future. How could you? Listen, you know, nothing that they do surprises me. Mayor, you met with 
Uh, I did. Actually, the server was walking out when the superintendent was walking in, when the superintendent was walking out. And uh, we had a great meeting. Um, but sadly, it's clear that he is already being sabotaged by the school board. Less than five minutes after he left, I was served with a lawsuit. The process server literally walked right past him. Mayor, there seems to be some debate in the legal community about the letter you sent about this referendum being on City of Rochester letterhead with your image on it. As a lawyer yourself, do you believe that that violated any regulations as far as advocating for something from your official position? I didn't advocate. I educated. NYPIRG has clearly stated that there was nothing wrong. And I educate it. And there's nothing wrong with me from my standpoint educating the citizens of Rochester that have called, that have asked, that have stopped me and asked the question of what does this mean? What does this mean in November? What would I be voting on in November? And clearly letting them know what they will be voting on. There is nothing wrong with that. Can you elaborate on what you said he's being sabotaged? Obviously, you know. And I can't say this for sure, but if you're building a relationship with the mayor and you're having a meeting with her and you know that today or tomorrow or within the next couple of days she's going to be served with a lawsuit, to say, hey, listen, you know, by the way, you know, this, I want to build a relationship with you. And because I want to build this relationship with you, I want you to know that you, we, we are going to fight this in court, you know, and that's it. That never came up. Um, but it's, it's interesting that it didn't come up, but it's, it's okay. Uh, my goal here is to give the citizens of Rochester a voice, for them to finally have the voice that they've been waiting for for 40 years. And this referendum gives them that voice. In the year 2020, we will be celebrating the centennial celebration of women getting the right to vote in this country. We are a few steps away from where Susan B. Anthony cast her illegal vote so many years ago. And for our school district to be trying to stop democracy, the one value that we have in our country, democracy, it's sad. It is sad that instead of focusing on our children and on our children's education, they're focusing on stopping their parents from having the right to vote for their future. And I will, and we will join together as a city and as a community to give voice to the voiceless, and I will continue to fight for our kids. Thank you. All right, thank you very much.